Hi, good afternoon, everyone. Jay Kim. Yes, uh, today I feel very honored to be able to present our work to this uh, very prestigious event of WTN Summit. Yeah, I mean, as you can see, we are all from Iowa State University. And yeah, I mean, your typical image of Iowa State University can be easily like this, a school in the middle of cornfield. Well, the truth is, it is. <laughs> it is in the cornfield. Yes, but we do serious science there. And then we even produced the Nobel laureate a few years back, and then he didn't get it by studying cones. He was a chemist and a very hardcore chemist, Dr. Shugman. Oops. So I do very serious science as well there. And then whenever I do science, my main motto is this, learn from nature. It is very difficult to beat 3 billion years worth of optimization. And then the, the recent progress in conversion evolution theory also tells us that there may be something more profound hidden in nature. So why not harness these uh, open source, loyalty-free inventions around us? Then they will guide us to biomimetics and then bioinspired engineering. And then we already see the benefits, like this uh, Velcro we use every day, and this uh, gecko-inspired dry adhesives. In my case, I started out by replicating this uh, bug eye structure, compound eye structure, with a soft man structure like this. It was published in Science Magazine in 2006, and then that's how I got my current job in Iowa State University. So, recently, I was obsessed with this uh, topic of a gentle grabbing. So with the uh, advance in biomedicine, we got more and more fragile and then delicate stuff to grab. So I had a look at this uh, length scale chart, and then I noticed it. For really small objects, like 10 micron or low, below, like these uh, single cells, we have uh, some way of gentle grabbing. For really big ones, like in centimeter scale, like the fruit, yeah, everyone wants hand-picked fruit. And then we are starting to have some new machines, like these uh, soft robots, to do the job. But I found a big gap in this uh, something called the mesoscale millimeter and then lower scale regime. There we have a lot of things to grab, like these uh, cell spheroids, or small creatures like these uh, nematodes, C. elegans, or small parts for manufacturing. And we don't actually have a good way of gentle grabbing in that regime. I know we have some two-fingered micro grippers, something that looks like this from Richmakan University of Japan, holding a one, millim one millimeter diameter fissure, but I didn't feel very comfortable because this type of a two-finger pinching motion almost always stress or and deform the object like this. So can it be simpler or smaller and most importantly, gentler? That was my concern at the time. Well, I turned to the nature again and then the answer came in the form of this uh, tentacle, which animals use extensively to grab something, like this uh, elephant trunk, proboscis of a uh, butterfly, or real tentacle of an octopus. It's not just limited to animal kingdom either. So this is a sundew plant catching an insect with its uh, tendrils. So it's everywhere. So why not replicate it? And this tentacle motion can be actually a new paradigm in micro gripping because it will wrap around conformally if it's gentle enough. So it will give minimal stress or deformation, unlike this one, two-finger two pinching motion. So I started out first with the elastomeric, rubbery tube with the asymmetric cross-section. And then it is very well known if you have a rubber tube with the asymmetric wall thickness, like thinner here, thicker there, then you put air in, and then it will start to bend. It's a very well known. But there is a, some problem with that. Because as, I as you have just seen, it won't give you a full multi-tone spiraling like the rear tentacle. It will give you only one tone like this, and that's not enough. Okay. So is there a simple way of enabling this uh, spiraling motion? 
if it takes a million dollars, then it's, there's no gain. It's a deal breaker. So we thought a lot, and then we came up with a concept of a shape engineering, which means that by changing shape a little, we can make a lot of changes in its motion. In our case, we can add a hump, which is a small protrusion uh, in the outside of this microtube. And then we found that it can actually amplify bending into spiraling. How it can be done? We have established a very elaborate mathematical model, but I will just uh, skip this part. I have a poster outside. You can come and then have a look. But what's really important is that, first of all, adding a hump is real easy. Because if you uh, use a properly precured polymer, then it will beat itself into this uh, hump form. So it's a very easy, and then it's a very scalable in terms of manufacturing. And then second, it really works. That's important. So this is a one of our exemplary microtube. So we, it's a length is about 5.6 millimeter, and then thickness, a little bit thicker than your hair, like this. And then you blow air in it, and then as expected, it will give you just one ton. Yeah, but for the same, to the same microtube, we added a hump like this. So this is a magnified image, and then that's about like 100 micron in size. And then you pump the air, voila, yeah, it made a multiple ton. And then by optimizing the structure, you can actually get two full tons with a radius, center radius, only like about like 200 micrometer. That's a small enough to catch a, actually a small nematode. So the motion itself is a pneumatically controlled, and then it is a very rapid. This is a real-time movie, and then this is a lifelike. It looks like just a, an animal motion, as you can see. And then we can actually make it faster, rap more rapid. And then, yeah, I mean, I originally, I promised that this will be a gentle grabbing motion. But how gentle is gentle? To quantify that, we set up this uh, elaborate measurement system for the grabbing force or squeezing force of this uh, tentacle. And then the measurement results show that the force is about like 0.78 millinewton at usual typical pressure. It is about 10 times higher than the muscle force of a C. elegans, the nematode, that was about 62 micron, uh, micronewton. But it is actually smaller than that 1 millinewton tissue damage threshold. That means that this structure, this structure cannot hurt our tissue. So that means that we have a small, soft, and safe manipulator. And then this is an idea for handling delicate biological objects, like this a fish egg. So this fish egg is about like a 500 micron in radius. And then, yeah, I mean, you can see it. This is a wrapping it conformally without hurting the fish egg, without deforming it. Actually, it deforms itself to fit the curve of this fish egg. So that's one thing. Or an ant. So we actually lasso an ant with our tentacle without killing it, without harming it. I will show you the proof later. <laughs> yeah. Actually, the ant attacked our tentacle. That was a problem. OK. So yeah, we have a small, soft, and safe manipulator. And then I see a future use of this for robotic medical operation, like for the dose for minimally invasive surgery, which is becoming a hot topic these days. And who knows? It can be utilized for artificial proboscis, for mobile microfluidics, or intravascular navigation, or drug delivery device. It can, I mean, th there are a lot of future in it. So to, con to conclude, we made a micro tentacle, and then showed the spiraling motion, and then we added the shape engineering. But most important thing is that soft robotics is a fun. And I will go on that way. I will make sure that in that way. OK, so we appreciate NSF support and also support from this uh, poor end. Now we can let it go. Thank you very much. <laughs>